Hi everyone, it's Friday, September 21st, 2018. I hope everyone's having a beautiful day in the Lord. Um, I have something for you. Uh, but first I would like to say the Our Father, so please join me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Boy, I tell you, um, things are really going fast in the world. And um, um, I'm not going to throw out any dates, but I'll tell you that my spirit is filled um, with the anticipation of the Lord coming at any moment. Um, personally, I think it's foolish for people to spend so much time trying to figure out when Jesus is coming because how much do you really love Jesus because this whole thing is supposed to be a secret it's supposed to be a mystery and the reason it's a secret and the mystery is because of Satan why on earth would any of you just mathematically constipate yourselves repeatedly to find out that date and to put it out there. Are you trying to sabotage our exit? Are you trying to sabotage our first love, Jesus, that's coming to get us? It makes no sense to me. How foolish to throw out dates. I think that maybe you just want to be the one to guess it. And you know, I'll tell you, honestly, if you throw out enough numbers, you might land on the very day and get lucky. But that doesn't mean you figured anything out. Remember, the Lord will reveal to you when he's coming in your spirit. And it's up to you to get people ready. Okay, not to reveal a date or a time. Shame on all of you. Who dedicate your lives to crunching numbers rather than bathing and soaking and praying and witnessing to people about Jesus Christ. I'm sorry I had to say that because that's what's in my heart. So I'll move on to this. And this is called, Does He Know Me? And the reading is from John 10, 3, and it says, He calls his own by name. When I have sadly misunderstood him, see John 20, 11 to 18. It is possible to know all about doctrine and still not know Jesus. A person's soul is in grave danger when the knowledge of doctrine surpasses Jesus' avoiding intimate touch with him. Why was Mary weeping? Doctrine meant no more to her than the grass under her feet. In fact, any Pharisee could have made a fool of Mary doctrinally, but one thing they could never ridicule was the fact that Jesus had cast seven demons out of her. You could read about that in Luke 8 too. Yet his blessings were nothing to her in comparison with knowing Jesus himself. She turned around and saw Jesus standing there and did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Mary. You can read that in John 20, 14, 16. Once he called Mary by her name, she immediately knew 
that she had a personal history with the one who spoke. She turned and said to him, Rabboni, you could read that in 2016. When I have stubbornly doubted, have I been doubting something about Jesus, maybe an experience to which others testify, but which I have not yet experienced? I see this going around so much that people just have an idea of what is acceptable and what isn't spiritually. And they don't realize that maybe the Lord has given one person something different than he's given you. And that looks like it's, you know, way over the fence to you, way out of left field. And you start to ridicule that person. Okay. Not thinking that maybe God had given that information to that specific person and not to you. And to you, it, that looks far-fetched. Uh, crazy or out of left field. The other disciples said to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. But Thomas doubted, saying, unless I see, I will not believe. Thomas needed the personal touch of Jesus. When his touches will come, we never know. But when they do come, they are indescribably precious. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. I remember when um, I asked the Lord one morning in prayer to see a little bit of him, just a little bit. And about, I don't know, half an hour later after I finished my prayers, I went out to get a coffee and, and my bagel. And um, I got an impulse to pull out my camera to take a picture. And through the camera there's this big golden ball in the back seat of my car just like the burning bush and then I put the phone down and I turn around and I look and there was nothing there and I look through the rearview mirror and there was nothing there it was nothing reflecting Sun or bouncing Sun into the car and I put up my phone and here there it is again and I'm sure some of you who've been on my channel for a long time know this story but um, I went, I pulled around the corner and I went under a tree where it was shady and I looked through my phone and it was still there. And then I left and uh, the song came on, turn around, look at me. And I knew it was the Lord. I just knew it. And um, believe me, I wasn't ready for what I had asked for. And uh, I cried all the way home. I couldn't wait to get home. And Thankfully, at the time, my husband was home, and I ran, and he held me for about a half an hour, and I was uncontrollably weeping because it was frightening um, that the Lord had appeared to me, and I didn't, I didn't feel ready, people. And I'm saying this for a reason to you. Are you ready to meet the Lord? Are you ready to come face to face with the Lord? Have you cleansed yourself in the blood of Jesus Christ? If you're backslidden, have you apologized for some of the things that you've done and made it right with him? Or are you, are you bathing at, at, back in sin? Did you go backwards into sin? And just because maybe you were once saved 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, you, don't you feel like you have to reconnect with him. Jesus is going to say to those that don't have a relationship with him, go away, I never knew you. Do you want to hear that? Honestly? I'm telling you this for a reason, because the day that I came face to face with that consuming fire that was in my back seat, there were other people after I posted that I was so excited. I'm sure they thought, uh, that uh, I'm, I may have had a tin foil hat on my head or uh, something to that effect or that this was just too far-fetched to believe that God would not do that. But I've had even more things happen to me uh, that were astounding throughout my walk 
that people would not believe if I told them. So, you know, this is twofold. It's like, you know, do you believe that your brother and sisters saw this or heard that? Uh, maybe you're skeptical. Uh, you might not be spiritual. And you think that when someone, you know, comes out with something so spiritual, it's hard to understand. So you start to put the person down. That's not a good thing to do. You know, because Jesus' ways are not like our, our ways. The Lord has broken the veil on me so many times with things that you would never imagine that could have happened in the natural. And, um, and the second thing is to say to you, are you ready to meet Jesus? Because if he's going to come any day now, are you ready? Did you ask yourselves that question? Are you ready? I pray all the time for God, to God, for me to be ready, spiritually and emotionally, that I could handle that. And everybody is jumping up and down and can't wait, but you haven't imagined what it would feel like to, when it actually happened. I had a little, little taste of it. And believe me, it's shocking. If you're not prepared. So that's all I want to say today. And um, I think I said a mouthful, actually. Uh, I really feel in my spirit that we can go home at any time now. And, you know, I felt that in my spirit before, but the world wasn't in the shape it's in the other times that I felt it. And we're a lot further on prophetically in the world so who knows but one thing we do know is that we need to be ready get yourself right with the Lord if you haven't come to Jesus come to Jesus now give your life to him okay you don't want to be left here when Jesus comes and remove his church because the restraint that's holding Satan back will be loosed and all hell is going to break loose on the earth here okay i'm going to put the salvation video right behind this if you haven't yet come please follow along don't click off okay i'll say a term i learned in real estate school a long time ago uh, time is of the essence God bless you and have a beautiful day in the Lord. Oh, don't forget, I love you and Jesus loves you. Never forget how much he loves you. Never forget it. Keep looking up. <laughs>